Hello and welcome back to the new player series for Crusader Kings 2. So, last time we went and set up everything so we are ready to unpause the game right now. What are we expecting to pop up? We're expecting the council support to pop up from the people who are going to vote with us to change our laws so we can get Premium Janitor succession. And we're expecting our a court physician thing to pop up to say, okay, we found a court physician for you. So we're going to unpause, we're going to go at speed uh, 2 right now. The top right, we're at or two ticks. We will go at speed three. So it's going to go relatively slowly, just through the day. There we go. We got a whole bunch of events. Let's start with the first one. My liege, your wisdom and mercy are legendary. I will support you in the council. Great. He's going to support us. Right. Next one. Scouts bring word of a mystic blind man who supposedly works miracles. He appears in villages and cures all manner of ailments afflicting the peasants. There are even rumors he made a lame man able to walk again. The peasants call him Albert the Blind. A gift of gold would convince them to join your court. So, Albert the Blind, right here, is somebody we can get to join our court. He is. This is from the Recruit a Court Physician um, event, basically. And what we can do is we have two options. We can either pay the 10 gold, he will join our court, he will like us because we have given him a job, and he will become our court physician. Or we can say, we have changed our mind, which will then, if we go to the recruit court physician, go to the little question mark. None of these must be true. Uh, well, it says the, no, that's not the one we're looking for right now. Uh, it's the bottom option right there. Can only look for a physician once every three years. So, if we say no to this guy, this means that we are not going to recruit a new person. But this guy seems reasonably good. He has 20 learning, which is the important stat for a court physician. So we are going to put him in charge. It costs us 10 ducats or 10 gold. I think it's 10 gold now. I think they did actually change it so it's all gold. Although they actually just have a little picture. Which um, I think is also new. Anyway, we're going to pay it. And that's him. And it automatically just puts him in charge. So if we go along to this one. We have a look there. He is in charge. Now, we wanted last time to put Hughes in as our designated regent. He just came back to us and said he will support us on our council. We're going to put him in as our designated regent. There we go. Right, wait, another tip. The other guy comes back to us, our nephew, and he says, yes, I will support you in the council. Right. So now, if we have a look at, at late administration late, we have three supporters. So three people will vote yes, plus ourselves, that's four, versus two. This will pass. Right. Now, what's interesting is we do have a new thing that we can do here. We can send this to council consideration. So basically, what this will do is it will send a law to the council and then come back to us and they can say what they think about it. But we don't need to do that because if we have a look here, we already have enough supporters of the law. So we're going to go with it. We have approved the institution of the late feudal administration law. They, he has voted uh, for it because we asked him to. And Count Hughes has voted for it because we asked him to. Now, if we go to inheritance, all the options are available to us. So we're going to select primogenitor and click it. Right, we will, Duchy of Burgundy, will switch to succession by primogenitor. Okay, we have switched. You'll see that very quickly it changed who's next in line. Because it's no longer a gavel kind. Gavel kind rules don't follow. Primogenitor rules follow. And now, it says we have unlanded sons. Now, why that previously wasn't an issue for us was because in gavel kind, our sons would inherit, like, they were set to inherit land. So that wasn't a problem. But now, we have some sons who are not set to inherit any land, so they're now unlanded sons, and we will lose a tiny amount of prestige each month. Um, it's 0.8 prestige we'll lose each month because of that. So, um, if we go over here, we can now follow our succession law. Um, I say what I want to do is I want to open up our family tree and our succession law. So, right now, primogenitor. So, first son inherits. So, Henry inherits first. Followed by Hughes, Hughes is his son. Followed by his second son, Robert. Then by Hughes. Then it skips over Helly, because Helly um, is a woman and is therefore not, uh, she is not first in line. So all males inherit, then all females inherit. That's how this one works. So it goes Reynaud after that, and then it goes up here. Skips our daughter, it goes back along. It's looking for a male heir. Skips our daughter, goes on to Robert. And then after that, the next one would be Simon. And then if we follow succession law from there, it would go back along, it should, I believe, go back along to Hell after that. 
or heli then to a uh, beatrix but i might go to constance then or red then down to those two it depends exactly how it works out but i think um, either way they're fairly far along in succession right um so now we have our new succession law we have our new law and um that's pretty much it for what we need to do directly now we need to have landed sons so we could go and ask our liege right now can we um I see where was that option i guess that option's gone because our liege no longer has land they can give away mm, i don't know um we did have an option up here to ask our liege for a uh, land land for our son but i guess that option has gone away because of reasons um it's probably something i missed but yeah right now we have nothing to do now what are we going to aim to do what, what do we want to achieve from this point on so we we can crawl dijon we have two thousand men roughly who would we want to attack well maybe somebody nearby us so i'm going to switch it into direct vassals mode by control left clicking france we'll see we have a couple of these people so we have uh Duke uh, Diabot of Champagne, who controls all of that land. So he's probably not a good target. We have Count Send. He controls this one province. He's probably a reasonably good target for us. We, that might do well in our realm. And then we have Count um, Eten of um, Borges. Is that Borges? Or Borges? So that he controls that land. And then we have this one next to us. This is um, our king's land. Probably not best to try and attack him for it. And then over here, we have the Duke of Aquitaine, um, who controls all of this land. Probably not best to attack him for it either, because he's fairly strong. And then if we wanted to, say, go east, we would have to attack the Holy Roman Empire. And that's not going to happen. So, uh, Son, probably. Post ascends, but Son is probably the one that we're going to attack. Um, it has 1,000 people. Now, what we do want to check is in our Duchy of Burgundy, with click this little button that says de jour. So if you're wondering how I got here, little shield opens up this, uh, the little shield opens up this menu, click de jour, shows us what the Duchy of Burgundy should have in it, what we have rights to have. And it's actually what we have directly. So that's fine. It, we de jour have all of our land, so we have no actual claim to send, uh, to send right now. So what we might want to do is we might want to go and fabricate claims on it. So, uh, that means that we need to send our council over there, and that's going to take a year for a councillor to be free to do that. So what we're going to do is we're just going to zoom out a little bit, we're going to unpause the game, we're going to speed it up a little bit, we're just going to sit back, relax, and wait for some events to pop up. Oh! So, what you see here is all these little armies have popped up, and down in this corner, you'll see that we are now in a war. So somebody, our liege, probably just started a war. Let's have a look at what war started. The Holy Roman... The Holy Roman French de jure war over Zealand. So, left hand side, I believe, is attackers. Right hand side is defenders. So, we are being. So, our liege, the defender, our nephew, with 11,000 men, is being attacked by the Holy Roman Emperor, Kaiser Henrik, with 18,000 men. So, likelihood is. Oh, I should also change the map mode back. There we go. Uh, likelihood is that Kaiser Henrik is probably going to end up winning this war because he has more men and it's just likely that he'll win it basically because he has more men now um, our nephew he has oh I forgot something else we should be doing but I'll talk about that in a second our nephew has um, uh, when I click on him down here uh, so up here click on our nephew and then I switch to Pax tab he has no allies so nobody else will be joining him in the war. Now, if I go to Kaiser Henrik and go to the same tab, we'll see that he also has no allies. So nobody will be joining him in the war. So what this means is that it's just a straight fight between Kaiser Henrik and our liege. So he's probably going to um, lose this land. So, what's the land? The Holy Roman French de jure war over Zealand. So that probably, so we can get a lot from this. Holy Roman, that's because it's the Holy Roman Empire declaring the war. Uh, hyphen French, so this means that he is attacking France. De jure, so this means by rights should be in my land war over Zealand. So, what this means 
is by rights, Zealand should be mine, says the Holy Roman Emperor to the French guy. And you can kind of do that for any any war and kind of split it up. So if we click up, uh, I should do that again. Uh, just go through it as I'm saying it. You click on the shield, it will show you what the county of Zealand is. So the county of Zealand is this one little province here. And if we click show de jure ties, what this does is up here we get these little flags. Uh, or these little crests. And then it shows you that de jure, we click on it, this is part of the Duchy of Holland. So that's this land, which is controlled by the Holy Roman Emperor. And, well it's controlled by one of his vassals, but it's controlled by the Holy Roman Emperor in a, in a sense. Then it's also de jure part of the Kingdom of Frisia, which nobody controls, but that doesn't matter. If the Kingdom of Frisia was to exist, this would be a part of it. And then if we click on Holy Roman Emperor, Empire, it is part of that. So, um, it all kind of makes sense there. He is declaring war for this one province. Uh, I think England is also at war, so we can probably do another split up here. So, um, if we have a look, if we hover, if we click on one of England's provinces, we can click on anyone. Like, say we clicked on this one, we can do the same thing. Um, we can see it, that England is defending against Duke William the Bastard in Norman Conquest. Now, this is a special war. Because this is a event-driven war, basically. This is one that will always start on this, on uh, like the same point every single game. In 1066, the Normans will declare for England, because um, that's what happens in real life. And at the same time, he is defending against uh, King Harold in the Norwegian invasion. So this is um, another thing that will always happen at 1066 in the game. So. Basically, um, those two things have different naming conventions because those are event-driven wars rather than them being a war that the AI has declared by itself. Like These are things that have been kind of hard-coded in. Right. So, um, the other thing, I did say there was something else I forgot to do, which you may have remembered, but and if you did, well done. If we have a look at our packs tab, we'll see that we have some people in here. We have the Duke of Barcelona, and we have the Duke of Flanders, and I said we should get alliances with them, so that's what we're going to do. First of all, we're going to click on the Duke of Barcelona, and we're going to see what wars he's in. So we clicked on him, we'll see in Diplomacy, it will show you the wars. He's attacking Emir um, Ahmed of the Houdid Emirate in the Barcelonian Holy War for Barcelona. So, what we get from here, Barcelonian, obviously Barcelona is declaring it. Holy War for Barcelona. So, um, he's declared a Holy War. Holy Wars are a war where basically, um, it's obviously against a different religion. Uh, that's the Holy War part. And it's something where uh, he's declared for a duchy level title. Or a duchy level amount. He declares for all land within a duchy. So that's generally like four or five bits of land. Um, but in this case, we can probably assume that given that he is the Duke of Barcelona, he's probably declaring for like the remains of a duchy that he does not yet control. And um, it also means that anybody of, its, of the same religion can join in and help out. So basically it's like um, if Fran, if, well, in this case, Barcelona, right here is a load of holy war on uh, the Houdids. So that's this guy. So um, if he was Given that he's declared this war, it might be that the Dunanids are like, Hey, I don't want these Catholics coming in here. I'm going to join your war. Something like that. So that's uh, basically what this is. So if we become his ally, he will likely call us into this war. Now, that's he has, this guy has 3.6k troops, roughly. We have a look at the Houdids. They have 2.16k troops. So they're likely to, so Barcelona, assuming nothing else changes, is likely to win the war. So we are fine joining Barcelona uh, Barcelona here. We would very much like to be in part of his war. Well, we wouldn't necessarily want to be part of his war, but we're not, we don't have a problem with it. We're happy to sit back and let him have his war. So, we'll offer to, uh, not offer to join war, we'll form an alliance with him. He will say yes, because we have, he likes us, we have similar interests. In that, um, well, just in general, similar interests. The AI has different ways of working that out. And then he has a base reluctance, which is negative three. So basically that means he has three reasons not to do it. 
But because we have same interests and he kind of likes us, he'll do it. So we will get this alliance. Right. Next guy is the Duke of Flanders. Duke of Flanders up here is currently in our war because he is also a vassal of our liege. So we are going to form an alliance with them. Now, if we have a look here, he will say yes, but he doesn't like us as much. He has the same interest, though. So it's got three reasons not to do it. He's got three reasons to do it. And you'll be like, wait, doesn't that mean that they can't, they're kind of cancelled out? Why, why is he saying yes? Well, sometimes he'll also say no in this situation. Because, basically, these little pluses, they don't mean anything. These pluses mean that they are in a range that gives them one. And when they get over the next range, that'll give them another plus. So, basically, he's probably like 3.1 reasons for, and then, you know, three reasons against. So that's why this is uh, showing like that. But yes, it'll, if it says yes here, like 99.9% .9 of times, this means yes. So unless something changes between you clicking this button and uh, him deciding, this means yes. Right, so we're going to get another couple of vassals. Now, what you might be asking yourself is, why don't I raise up all of my men? I have 2,000 men. I can go and help my liege. This means that he will have 13,000 troops against the 18,000. Surely this would be better. Well, here's the thing. It's not our war. This is something you have to kind of get into your head when you're playing this game. A lot of things aren't my business. So, say that the Holy Roman Empire wins this war. He will take this province up here of Zealand. Now, I mean, it's kind of bad for France. It's kind of bad for our liege. It makes him a little bit weaker. But overall, he's taken this small amount of land. It's not that big a deal, right? So it doesn't really make our leash that much weaker. It doesn't make the person that we're serving that much weaker. So it's not like his, he's going to fall apart. But what if he does fall apart? Why is that, is that bad for us? I mean, we're reasonably strong. We're a medium-sized person. If we broke free from France, we have several options then. We could maybe pick apart France's corpse. Like, we could uh, rise up. We could take all of that land. We could be in the new person in charge. Or... We could swear fealty to the Holy Roman Empire. We could move on to a more powerful leash. We could have a better protector. We'd have more room for expansion. We could expand from within the Holy Roman Empire, and that could give us more options. Holy Roman Empire has elective monarchy, so we could potentially become in charge of the entire empire. Like, there is a lot of reasons why ne we don't necessarily want to help out. I mean, even in our allies' war, if our ally was to lose this war to the Hudids, I mean, our ally doesn't lose any land. He's a little bit weaker for a while. He has less men. He's maybe not as rich as he used to be. But if we send no men over to our ally, like, it's not going to change anything for us directly, except that we're going to have less men. Our men are going to have died. We're going to have. We're going to be weaker. We're going to be a weaker target for other people to attack. So there's a lot of self-preservation things that need to be thought about in this one. So basically... Our Leisure's War, we 100% do not care about our Leisure's War at all. Apart from the fact that um, the Holy Roman Empire may send men to siege our lands. But he's not going to, he's going to send men to Zealand because that's what he wants. And that gets him War Score. If we click down here, we'll see that there is a thing called War Score. And basically, achieving the War Goal, that will get you what we call Ticking War Score. So we, we can't hover over it because nothing's happened yet, but... Um, Basically, ticking war score is a thing where it's, I have the objective, so therefore, each month that I hold the objective, I will get a point towards the war. When I get 100 points, you must surrender. And uh, if, if our leash gets 100 points, then the other guy must surrender. And then, at any point in between, that pretty, like, say our leash has uh, 50 points, the other guy may want to white peace, which is both people saying, you know, we're cool, okay. This war was a mistake kind of thing. Let's let's just both back out. The person who attacks loses a little bit of prestige because they declared a war they could not win. But overall, it's generally fine. Um, or he can surrender, which would mean that uh, he's just saying, okay, I, I give up. I can't beat you. I will pay you some uh, compensation for declaring this war upon you. So it's kind of just a... Um, this is your how things are going to happen. Now, the AI most often will not back out of a war unless the war score is 100%. So, or they're fighting a target who is just significantly stronger than they are. So say that the Holy Roman Empire attacked a very a one province person. Like he only controlled one of these little squares on the map. He may, 
the person with one province might be more inclined to surrender just straight away because he's not very strong. So that's roughly what that is. But this war down here with Barcelona, if Barcelona becomes stronger, this might actually be good for us. Because if we want to expand, we may want our ally to be strong so we can call them in and we can say, okay, we helped you and you have become stronger, come help us. That might be a more worthwhile war for us to be in. Anyway, let's unpause the game and get these alliances. So, uh, to the great Duke Robert, at your wisdom of mercy a legendary, I, Duke Ramon uh, Ben-Gur, the old, accept your proposal for an alliance. Dear brother-in-law, peace be with you. I, Duke uh, Bodwin the fifth of Flanders, accept your proposal for an alliance. Perfect. We now have allies. And we got this little pop-up. To the magnificent Duke Robert, blessings upon you and your house. We request that you honour your obligation and answer this calls against Emir Amrit of the Houdet Emirate. So this is the war that Barcelona was in. Declining this would cost us prestige. Makes sense, right? We are incapable of joining this war. This war is not crazy. Like, this war is not he's going and suiciding against someone else. This is just he's asking us to join a war where we would be allies... Um, it's against a religious enemy, you know, it's kind of just the, this is a war that we should join in if we are actually allies. And might make our, us an alliance breaker in the eyes of the world. So, if we break an alliance, other people are unlikely to want an alliance with us because why would they want an alliance with somebody who doesn't actually go and join wars? It just doesn't make sense. If we accept, we would be part of the Barcelonian Holy War for Barcelona. Well, of course we're going to accept. We ha when we can't afford to lose 200 prestige, and we actually would quite like to be in this war, so we will accept. Right. Um, I am going to end the episode here. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.